So welcome everybody to this um, workshop on creating and disseminating uh, Qualtrics reports. My name is Tiffany Quash. Um, I'm also going to be sitting here admitting people while, we're while I'm talking at the same time. So the purpose of this workshop is to go over the basics of creating and disseminating a Qualtrics report. We'll cover how to create a report, visualizations, and sharing the report. This workshop assumes familiarity with Qualtrics. Uh, some of our learning outcomes or our learning outcomes for this particular workshop is to explain how to create a Qualtrics report, access and interpret results, and create and copy results. Um, I just wanna say thank you so much for everybody who filled out um, the survey that I sent to everybody that was really helpful um, because we're going to be playing with some of that data. So yay, we get to play with data. I'm so excited about this. Um, if you've been in my workshops before, um, you will know that I tend to go about 20 or 30 minutes. Um, so it's not, it's not you or anything like that. It's probably me. So if I'm going too fast, just say, hey, Tiffany, can you slow down so I can catch up? Not a big deal at all. Following this workshop, what I will do is I will give everybody access to the survey um, so you can play around with the data, okay? So without that, with, with, <laughs> without more being said, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. And if I can get a thumbs up from folks, just seeing that you can see my screen, my survey. Awesome, thank you, Martini. Um, so what you're going to first do when you get into this screen right here, and this is just the survey itself, is you're going to click on results. And again, you don't have access to this yet. What I will do is I will give you access to this um, after the workshop is completed. So as you can tell, this is, these are all the results on the results page from this particular, um, from what you all gave me feedback on. So I've attended X or blank CTRL workshops this academic year. You can tell by this first visualization, it's a bar graph. Um, and we can, if we scroll down, when I ask the question, is it what, this is my first workshop for this academic year. We see that 14 people have selected this number or this um, selection, one to three, six people, four to six, three, seven to nine, zero, and over 10, four. And I'm just gonna go over each of these results so you kind of get a better idea of what it looks like. I mostly attended research work workshops on, and then we said in vivo, Qualtrics, R, SAS, SPSS, Stata, and other. And you can see the results over here with the number of people who, oops, sorry about that, the number of people who chose each of these. And remember, with this one, you could choose more than one selection. I would be interested in workshops lasting 30 minutes, 45 minutes, or 60 minutes. Yay, 45 minutes was chosen. Um, so like I said, this workshop may not be the full hour. It may just take 30 minutes. Um, but folks did say 45 minutes in length. So I'm going to scroll down. 16 said 45 minutes, 6 said 30 minutes, and 4 said 60 minutes. And then I use Qualtrics every day, every other day, once a week, when a project comes up and requires the use of Qualtrics, or once a month. So the results from this say 2, 2, 3, 18, and 1. So for the open-ended questions, and I want to jump in right here and say, the, these are my questions in preparation for this workshop. It is my first time using Qualtrics. By a show of hands, how many people are using Qualtrics for the first time? And I'm just going to scroll down. Just raise your hand if you're using Qualtrics for your first time. Okay, so one, two, Okay, so having said that, let me make sure that everybody, this is coming to AU, yes. 
Awesome. So what I'm going to do, I want to make sure that folks have the ability to get into Qualtrics. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the chat how you open your Qualtrics account just in case. And I'm just going to change my screen real quick. Um, I just want to make sure that you can see this new screen. Is that a, a thumbs up from everybody or somebody put in the chat? Yes. Awesome. Thank you, Andrea. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to the link that's in the um, chat and it'll pull you to this page. And it says, where can I use Qualtrics on campus? You're going to type in American.Qualtrics.com and you click here. And that from there, you'll be able to open your Qualtrics account. All you need to do is go there once and then that's it. Okay. So I'm going to go back to the results page here. And everybody sees the results, correct? So the first thing what I want to do in going over this with folks, I'm going to just scrolling up right here. Like I said, you're going to go to results. And the first thing you can do is you can report. When you get your report, you're going to have a default report show up. This is what my default report looks like. And all it does is show you the questions um, in the order that you asked. Okay. And the questions that you, in the order that you asked, um, in the order that you asked it on your survey. Hold on for one second, everybody, as I admit people. So this is your default report. It don't it doesn't necessarily mean that your default report will always look like a bar chart, but it, from this it does look like that. You can change your bar chart, so your visualization you can change that by clicking on it. And you see here at the very bottom, on the right hand side, it says it can you can turn it into a simple table, which is what it, this looks like. Go back to a bar chart. You can go to a line chart. You can go to a pie chart, a breakdown bar, a statistics table, which is what this looks like, or a gauge chart. So this is what all of this will look like when you change your visualizations. I'm going to change it back to bar chart right here. Um, when you go to, does anybody have any questions so far about how I got here? Okay, great. So I'm going to go back and what you can do is you can create a new report. So you can see I said workshop one, workshop report one and then workshop report one copy. So the way that I did that was I said, create new report and I'm gonna label it workshop report two and then hit create. So from here, I can actually edit which ones, which um, questions I want to be on this report so I can, I can send this, I can move this question to the bottom, this page to the bottom. By going to page options, I can say move to bottom. And it's been moved to the bottom of my worksheet. But I'm gonna scroll all the way back up. And so now question three is actually my question one, have I attended blank CTRL workshops this academic year? What I can also do is I can copy the report and just hit copy right here and it'll copy the report for me. But what I wanna do is go to workshop 
report one. And show you this. So this is the pie chart that I had that I've created for this particular question right here. Now let's say I want to share the report. All I would need to do is, excuse me, go to share report. And I can do a PDF, a Word document, PowerPoint slides, CSV. So all CSV really is is your Excel sheet. Report raw data. I can download previous reports, manage public report, or schedule report email. So, Dina, you've got a question? No, I couldn't get in. I'm just following you now because oh, okay, you know, yeah, you're supposed to be in it or not. No, it wouldn't take my password and I got hung up on that. And so now I can't do anything with my form because I'm not sure where to start. So I, I sure, guess I'm no just following problem. you. No problem. Yeah. So you're just going to be following. You're just going to be looking at what I'm doing. You're not going to actually have access to the for, the the survey just okay. yet. Yeah. So I'll give you access to the survey. Unfortunately, I was. was yeah. No, I misunderstood. I thought. Yeah, we were no supposed problem. To be no problem. Yeah. Tracy, go ahead. Oh, thanks. Okay. I think I might have stumbled onto maybe what I've been doing wrong. I haven't been going to share report. I've been going to export. Um, so I, I don't want to jump ahead, but does, yeah. does this version, one of the problems I've had, we do a lot of qualitative responses. And so they don't, you know, they won't show up in a chart like this. So is there, when I do try and download those responses into Excel, essentially, the formatting is so wonky and all over the place. It spends, I take a lot of time just trying to manage the Excel format so that it's readable and usable. Is is that this report form here something that just that happens more um, you know, appropriately for reading and using this right. form instead of that export one that I've been using, which is just like the wild west of spreadsheeting. <laughs> So what you're talking about is you've been downloading the CSV. It sounds like. I think, yeah, I've been yeah, doing that's it what from the share. I think I've been doing it from somewhere else, but yeah. Let yeah. Me see. So when you, when you click share report, it'll, and you click CSV comma separated, mm -hmm. that's what it sounds like you've been dealt. It looks like an Excel sheet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's what that is. Um, here, actually, I'll go ahead and download it. I'm just curious your recommendation for effective sharing of data that's you know qualitative right so this form actually will be um will look i'm doing air quotes will look qualitative um let me open it up for you okay sorry if that gets you out of order no 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 it's all good now let's see if i can drag it over so this is what it'll look like I don't know if you can see my screen. Yes. Okay. So this is question seven. These these are my questions in preparation for this workshop. So this is question seven with all the responses and those open-ended responses. Mm -hmm. um, so if you don't want it to look like this, for instance, mm -hmm. um, what you... Are you trying to connect the person that's responding to the response no to the full report to you know okay stakeholders what i would do is that i would just download the csv file mm -hmm. if all you want is like for instance this mm -hmm. i would just download the csv file you can also if you're presenting it for instance you can also present it in a word document which might be even easier And let's see what it looks like. And this is what it'll look like. Mm, yeah, that makes sense because my, uh, maybe because it's, it can be on a rather text heavy, just all of the like wrapping and, you know, pulling up the, it, it, to the top and, 
you know, it's just yeah. hard to read in that CSV. This is much more readable. So that was just share, report, and then word. Correct. Awesome. And and don't be afraid to like play around with it. You can't, there's, you can't break Qualtrics. Okay. <laughs> like, I, I just want everybody to, yeah. to, to rest assured you can't break it. Super helpful. Thank you. You're welcome. Does anybody else have any other questions? Those are really good questions, folks. I, I, I just love it when folks ask questions. Um, okay, so I've taken you through like how you can change your visualizations um, here. Let me just scroll down real quick in my cheat sheet. So you can also have an add a filter. So let's say that you want to I mostly attended workshop, research workshops on, and you just want selected, select choice. Let's say includes, or let's say excludes in vivo, for instance. Then it'll change everything to, it'll change your results for you. Now what question is here it is. And it'll change your results to just include Qualtrics, R, SAS, SPSS, and Stata, and then other. The other was AI discussion. So you can easily um, manage your filters that way. I'm just gonna take the filter off. Go ahead, Tracy. Okay, so just to refresh the reason you have that beautiful um, graph there is because you went to the workshop over there, not, not even the filter side, just the fact that you have that visual was because you dropped down and selected, um, the visuals, like how you want to see it, whether you want a bar or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So let me show you how I did that one more time. So I just clicked on it. I clicked on the pie chart. Mm-hmm. And down I can change it right now. Okay, here. so you don't even have to make a copy. You're actually just changing no. the original by clicking on the visual that's there and selecting Correct. a different visualization. Correct. Right. Thank you. I'm yeah. getting my money's worth out of this. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. No problem at all. Any other questions? So let's say that I want to... Um, schedule a report email. So let's say I want to send my this to somebody, right? Right now I have one contact in and it's to my counterpart, Eric um, Schuler. So let's say that I want to send it to Eric um, or actually let's create a new. So I'm going to sit, select um, new contact list and I'm just going to put my name in here. Then I'll click create. Just double check. Plus sign. And then create. Make sure that. I know it keeps saying this contact list is empty, but it's actually not empty. For some reason, it comes up that way. Um, and then you can select weekly or monthly. So let's say that I just want on monthly on the 13th. And then we're going to stay at 1400. So you can see it's military time. So two o'clock. So at two o'clock today, I should get the results. Um, I typed in, here you go. And I'm gonna put it in a PDF form and save. Actually, let me see if I can send it earlier. It'll be late, but let's see if it'll send at one o'clock, even though it's a little past one. So I should get an email 
um, that has this PDF. I don't have my email open right now, but let's see. Um, and I'll just wait for that email to come through. And that is how you would send the email out to whomever you wish to send the report to. Wasn't, um, your date, wasn't your date on there to send March 8th? No, that was another one. Okay. Yeah, I sent, I did a practice one. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for asking though. Um. I'm just trying to think of what else I can show you all from being in here. So your data sources, you can change your metric. Let's say that you just want to find the mean. You can change the mean and you still want to keep um, two decimal points. You can do that. Breakout none or default is none. You can keep that. Let's say you want to change the title. Um, and your title here is, you want to say workshops. As you can see here, it's just workshops. As I scroll down, you can change your show your bar um, labels. So you can do that as well. And this is all talking about this one right here specifically, because I'm addressing this visualization. You can change your custom palette. So let's say I want to change the color to my favorite color, blue. I can change it to blue. And it'll still save that automatically. Okay. Um, it showed you how to do a filter. Alicia, go ahead. Sorry, I didn't see your hand up before. Oh, no problem. Um, is there a way to have Qualtrics like send an email if someone like new fills out the re the form that you've created? Yeah, so you would just do it the same way. So you would just schedule. Wait, can you repeat your question one more time? I just want to make sure I understand it. Uh, is there a way to just like to receive a notification um, when you've received a oh. new form? Okay, so you won't receive the notification. The other person who's getting the email will receive the notification. Okay. Unfortunately, it doesn't work like maybe Outlook would send like the, like you've read this email notification. It won't do that. Okay. I think I, I was kind of thinking off of like Google Forms when it's like somebody new has, you know, completed your form. I was just wondering if Qualtrics had a, an equivalent to that. Oh, okay. Um. Let me think on that one real quick. So if somebody, so you can get updates if somebody completes your um, your survey. Like I know with not this particular survey, but other surveys that I have, I get updates on, you now have X amount of surveys completed. Um, and I get an update on that. So as the person who is the owner of the survey, I can get an update on that. Um, but I won't get an update on if I email, if the email has been sent, if they've read the email or anything like that. Okay. Yeah. I think maybe the issue for the, the survey that I'm thinking of is that it was shared with me. So, okay. I, so it's the creator who is of the form, who's getting the email. Is there yeah, a way more to than likely? Okay. More than likely. If the creator, if the creator is no longer here, I can transfer the survey to you. <laughs> uh, actually, in one case, that is true. <laughs> yes. Okay, so just send me an email. <laughs> so if anybody okay. can call and they have, um, if they are using the survey, and let's say that the person who owns the survey is no longer here at American, just shoot me over an email, and I can transfer the survey to you. Okay. Just okay. let me know what the name of the survey is and who. Right. Survey and I can go ahead and do that for you. Okay, thanks so much. You're welcome. Anytime.
So I showed you how to copy the report. I showed you how to edit the, the results. Um, oh, you're welcome, Andrea. Um, I showed you how to do filters as well and how to do sharing, how to share the report. I just want to make sure that I've gone over everything that I said that I wanted to make sure I wanted to make sure you understood before we left today. Um, using results and re reports, breakouts, we kind of went over that, but that wasn't a part of what we were talking about today. But I want to make sure breakouts allow you to display the data from different samples side by side. So we don't really have a lot of side by side data in here because there's it's not enough. Um, But let's see if I can do that anyway. Let's see if I can break out by there you go. So this is what a breakout would look like. Um, so I was wrong. So here's one for 30 minutes. And let's say people who said they wanted a 30 minute R session length, that was one person, S, um, SAS two, SPSS one, SATA two, and for a 45 minute session on in vivo, like two, two people. Qualtrics 6, R2, SAS 1, SPSS 2, SATA 1, and other, which is that AI session for 45 minutes. Um, for 60 minutes in length, um, in vivo 1, Qualtrics 3, R2, SAS 1, SPSS 1, and SATA 1. So you can still do the breakouts. I mean, I probably wouldn't use a breakout unless I really need to use a breakout. Um, Yeah. And so now I've gone back to none. So I'm not going to break it out at all. To access your global results settings, click settings. So this is the gear right here. And, and then select report settings. And you can change how you want this to be. So again, if you don't want the red, let's say that you want a beautiful blue, you can change it to blue and it can change everything for you. Um, simple statistics, you want your default visualizations, you want to be able to have access to those. Um, let's say that you want to use a table, a few simple table column totals. You can do that as well. And you can save changes. Yeah, go ahead, Tracy. So is the settings that you're showing us how you're basically setting up for all of your reports or do you set the settings for each individual report? So I just changed it for all of my reports. Okay. And just all the reports for this for this page. Okay. Uh, oh, wait, say that second part again. Sorry. So you see how I just changed it for workshop report one. It should not be changed. I could be wrong for workshop report. If it comes up blue, then I'm wrong. Oh, so yeah. yeah. So for workshop report one copy, it's gone. It has gone back to the original settings. Okay. So I would need to change it here. Okay. So, um, and everything you're doing is from results, not from reports, which is also helpful to me because yep. reports is like, you don't have any reports in here is usually what I get. Okay. Correct. So then, um, just a quick, I often have had results that have all those breakouts and I didn't know what they were, or how they got there. So basically I need to just go into my settings and say what I want in that report and take out anything I don't want or is Correct. it okay. So in the settings, after the report showing up for me and I see all this stuff I don't want, I go to settings for that report and just check the boxes that how I do want it presented. Exactly. And you want to make sure that when you're here, um, so I just clicked on the visualization again. 
Um, oops, wrong. Okay, and all that that you're showing us is from the settings is how you get to it. No, so this right here, what I'm scrolling down on, I clicked, you clicked on the, I clicked on the visualization and it changed everything. So when I click on the visualization, this second um, bar that's right here, mm -hmm. if I scroll down, it changes everything for this visualization. Mm. Oh, just that one. Like if you have multiple. Just that one. Right. Correct. Okay. So settings will be for the whole thing and clicking on it will just be for the particular visual visualization you're looking at. Right. So if I click the gear right here, this mm -hmm. gear changes the entire page. Perfect. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I'm just trying to see. Angela. Okay. Um, so I know the session is until two o'clock and I have all that time free, but I just wanted to say um, that at the end, um, if you can go back to how you got there, I apologize because I was with a student and I missed the first um, 10 minutes. So I don't know how you got there, but I've learned a lot. And so I'm just asking at the very end, when everybody else has asked all their questions, if you'll just go back and show me how you got to where you are. No problem. Actually, I can show you where how I got to where I am now. Okay. Um, so you see where the results is right here? Yes. So I just, here, let me, scoop, let me go back. So here's your survey. Right. And I clicked on results. Okay. And then this is my workshop. This is my default page. So your default page will always come up first. Okay. And then what I did was I created a new report. So these are my new reports. Okay. And then your new reports are based on questions that you want to answer or ones you want to leave out or things like that. Yes. They're based on what I want to answer. So every page, and I can email out that one page. So there are the pages that, excuse me, that I want to answer or want what I expect whoever needs that information to be given, I can give them that information. Gotcha. Okay, awesome. Well, that was easy. Yeah, no problem. Will, so, will you be going over those other tabs up there? Workflow, distribution, data? I mean, I can go over those. It's not a big is deal. Is there anything uh, good in them that we need to know? Or is everything good in just the reports tab? Um. Well, right. Well, this particular workshop, we're talking about the results page. Okay. Um. But I can tell you, so we're not going to go over workflow today. I can go okay. over distributions really quickly. Um, so, and apparently I found out that my distribution page looks very different than other people's distribution page because I'm an administrator. But if you click on distributions, you can send out the anonymous link. So I would just, you just copy survey link and then I would hi hyperlink it into whatever your message is to get out to respondents. Um, so there's that. And then here's also the QR code. Oh, okay. That's just for sending the stuff out. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's just for sending the survey out. Okay. So I'm actually going to give y'all, if you give me one second, go back to my results page. I'm going to give you my cheat sheet that I use for this. I'm going to put it in the chat. It's actually not my cheat sheet. It's Qualtrics's. Um, so this is what I was using throughout this um, workshop to kind of get through. I wanted, I wanted to make sure that I got through everything for everybody. Tracy, you had a question in the chat. Why wouldn't you just use default report? So you might not want to use default report. Like let's say there's something very specific that you want to use. So for instance, um, the default report covers every single question, right? But let's say that I don't want every single question on there. Let's say that I just want to have, I have attended blank CTRL workshops this academic year. So let me change this instead of the being the sign. Um, let's see. So let's say that I um, just want this page to be sent out as a part of um, 
my report. So I would just make this page, I would just share the, that particular page and I would remove these other um, page options. The way you would remove the page option is you can hide the page right here. Okay. So I just click hide page. Okay, that makes sense. So I haven't really encountered that. I typically am sharing a whole report, but that makes sense to me that if you just are trying to hone in on certain things or share certain parts, but otherwise I could just go ahead with the default because I can't break it, I heard. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can, I mean, just think of it as you're creating your own page as much as you want to, you know? And then yeah. for sharing for sharing that report, I mean, that's basically like, even if you just wanted to print it for yourself, you can choose PDF, Word, or whatever, PowerPoint slides. Yeah. Okay. So what I will tell everybody is on a research um, that I was doing, a research study that I was doing several, several years ago, what we did was we actually used the PowerPoint slides as yeah. a part of our presentation, and that was really helpful. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So use use the resources that are in Qualtrics to your right. advantage. So so when I look at data and analysis, I mean, you know, it's funny. That's what I would think that that's where I would think the results would be. But they're not there or are they? So let's click on data and analysis. So data analysis is just going to have the summation of everything that everybody responded to. So anybody who said you have my consent to participate. So this is the person who answered. Mm -hmm. uh, today at 12.07, this is their response. Got it. Yeah. And you can download this entire record if you so wish. Right. And then the report, did you go over reports? I did not go over reports. I'm Today is not a day I would typically go over reports, but mm -hmm. I mean, I'll just click on it. Um, it's just going to have the actual report of everything that you've collected, the data, the data that you collected. And you can export that too if you want, or PDF it. Um, you can share it. Yes. Yep. Download the PDF. Okay. But again, like, let's say that you only want one page. You don't want all. I think it was five questions I asked everybody, five or six questions. Let's say you don't want all six of those questions. Um, you only want one or two of those questions. You would just go back to results and pull two of those questions. Okay. okay. And then let me, one, my last question, the only way you could um, disaggregate the, the data with gender is by export, exporting the file and putting it into SPSS or something like that, if you wanted to disaggregate, like if one of your questions was male and female. Right. Um, so what I, so I don't work with SPSS. Okay. Um, so what I, and I get, I'm taking a guess is that you would probably put it in the CSV file. Right. Um, to use it, but right. again, I don't use SPSS. Yeah, because you can't you can't separate you can't disaggregate things in the Qualtrics system, like it, you know if question number one is are you male or female, it can't grab everyone who answered who's male and stick their stuff to the left and everyone who answered who's female and put their answers to the oh, right. Oh, I see what you're saying. So if if I wanted to say if I wanted to filter this and say, yes, filter, filter. There we go. Okay, now I hear what you're saying. Okay, so let's say that you have, um, let's say that I wanted to, includes any, oh yeah, it does it. And let's say I'm going to keep going. Yeah. Oh. Are we interested in. Yep. Yep. It does it. Equals okay. to say 30 minutes in length. Save and apply. So from here, it looks like. 
from the built, ooh, did I do it wrong? Image filters. So I mostly attend workshops include in vivo for 30 minutes in length. So people who said that, it looks from, from what I put in. And nobody said that. Nobody said that. Okay. Yeah. It, so it does it. I don't have to, I don't have to worry about SPSS. It does it. Mm -mm. Awesome. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Hey, and Tiffany. I'm Martini. I do have two quick questions. That for I you, no. <laughs> just wanted to check and see, but thank you for this presentation. This is so helpful. But um, the two questions I was going to ask you is, one, are you able to see a list of participants who responded in Qualtrics? I know you can get it from exporting. And then the second question I have that I wasn't sure about is, let's say a participant started a survey, they mm -hmm. didn't finish it. Do they need to start a new survey or is it a way to give them the like a QR code or um, a link, you are linked to their specific entry? Okay, so for your first question, um, if you go to, nope, wrong one data and analysis, you'll see every single response. I know it only goes to like a hundred per sheet. That's why I was just wondering if it would give you the full, like if we have 200 responses. Right, so if you had 200 responses, you can click export data. Okay. And it'll give you all of your responses. Um. You can change this to a hundred, yeah, up to a hundred. So let's say I wanted to say a hundred. And then we can export the data. Um, so that's number one. Number two, can you repeat your second question again? So like, especially our, one of our surveys has a lot of questions. There's like 70 questions. So oh, yeah. if a student is like partially completing it, and they left things blank, they would need to like do a new survey if we want them to like thoroughly fill it out. You can't give them a link to their specific survey that they started. No, so what you can do is under survey, and I have to, this is making me think now, um, not survey flow. Sorry, y'all, it's gonna take me a minute to. Survey. Survey options. There it is. So I clicked on survey options and then responses. Um, here it is. Allow respondents to finish later. You want to make sure that this is on. Okay. That's good to know. Thank you. You're welcome. Oops. Any other questions I can answer? Not a question, it's a comment that's very yes. and so helpful in real time doing this. And I realized what I was doing wrong before is I was going to data and analysis and hitting the export from there. So it wasn't even the CV option and results. And so I think that's why it was looking so wonky. So this has oh. really been helpful and I'm glad to have the recording so that when my brain gets away from it, I can go back and watch it. <laughs> No worries. And I'm always here. You can always book a consultation with me um, to go over whatever it is you're going through. Um, before you all leave, please fill out the evaluation so I can know what I what I can add to um, your toolbox. Um, if it's more Qualtrics so, um, workshops, we'll do more Qualtrics workshops. It's the, if it's a question on qualitative research, um, and then using in vivo, I can do that. I know last semester was in vivo heavy. Um, this semester, I'm trying to be a little bit more Qualtrics heavy. So um, if there's any suggestions you have, please don't hesitate to put it in the evaluation. So that's about it for me. Are there any other questions from you? And I gave you the link and what I'll do is in the email, I will, um, you'll be getting everybody who registered We'll be getting a, um, we'll get access to this 
to the actual survey and you can play around with the survey. Um, it, it won't break. Um, but if you have any questions, like please don't hesitate to reach out. And that's what I'm here for. Thank you, everybody. Please make sure you fill out the evaluation. Hey, I'm just gonna keep it open to make sure everybody can access the um, eval, whoever's left. All right, I think we're good. Um, oh, stop, I'll edit that. <laughs>